Hi everyone, this is YML and today we are going to see what a gradient boosting algorithm is and how it works from both a theoretical and practical perspective. So let's not waste any more time and let's get started. As in any supervised learning algorithm, gradient boosting tries to find the best function f that minimizes the expected loss between our labels and the predictions given by f. Nothing new here. However, in gradient boosting, we model this function by taking a constant value, which can be considered as some kind of basis, and then add multiple weighted weak learners to it, whose role is to bring the prediction closer to our labels. The constant value is our initial best guess, called f0, and it is computed as the value that minimizes our loss function. Then, the weak learners are created in a recursive, greedy manner by looking at what we should add to our current function in order to improve our prediction and minimize the loss. Let's iterate again so we can better understand this statement. So we have our current approximation fm-1 and we are trying to improve it and obtain fm. To do that, we are thinking for a weak learner hm that, when added to f, minimizes the loss between our predictions and labels. Unfortunately, it is not computationally feasible to find the optimal weak learners in this equation and the best we can do is to take a step in the steeper descent of this optimization problem. Hence for the name of the algorithm, gradient boosting. Ok, so that was the theory behind gradient boosting. Now let's look at the implementation that is used in most of the cases for this algorithm gradient boosting with regression trees. As I said, the first step is to compute f0 and for regression, when the mean square loss is employed, it is nothing else than the average of the labels. I've added some materials in the description that explain how this is derived for those of you that want to see more. The next step is to compute the gradient, or as they are often called in gradient boosting, the pseudo residuals. For our study case, this is simply the difference between our current predictions and the labels. Again, if you want to see why this is true, check out the links in the description. Then, we train a weak learner, our shallow tree, to predict the residuals. By doing this, we try to fill the gap between our current approximation f0 and the target labels. The predictions of the regression tree are denoted, in general, as gamma. Finally, we update our approximation f0 by adding the predictions of the newly trained weak learner that is multiplied by a learning rate denoted as the Greg letter mu in this case and thus obtaining the nest approximation f1. Now, all we have to do is add more weak learners by using the last three steps. Let's try to follow these steps one more time just to see how the prediction changes. So, we compute the residuals then we train a new tree to predict the residuals, and then we add the predictions of the tree to our current approximation f1, obtaining f2. You can see in the image on the right that the overall approximation has significantly improved for our initial hypothesis, f0. And that's basically it. In gradient boosting, we repeat these steps until we attain the specified number of trees or until the new trees do not bring any meaningful improvement. You just have to be careful to not add too many trees because unlike other tree-based algorithms like random forest, gradient boosting is quite prone to overfitting. Thank you for your attention. Please leave a like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to be up to date with the new content, and see you next time. Bye bye.